Good afternoon once again and welcome to your class in CPT3 Fundamentals of Crop Science. So in continuation of our lessons in pests and disease and weed management, we are now on diseases. So at this point, we're going to talk about uh, the different diseases, common diseases, which are very notorious. Uh, let's start with fung fungal diseases. So when you say fungal diseases, these are caused by fung fungus uh, um, such as anthracnose. So anthracnose is caused by Colitotricum glusporoides. So this um, attacks on beans, cucumbers, cantaloupes, watermelons, peppers, and tomatoes. Uh, we also have anthracnose of mango or papaya. And as I've said, this is caused by Colitotricum glusporoides. So they both they both attack um, papaya and and mango. So another very uh, important disease in Dorian is the Phytophthora Phytophthora disease, caused of course by Phytophthora fungus. And these are the different, as you can see on the photo. This is marked by um, white uh, white um, uh, infestation on the fruits and also on the stem. So in tomato, uh, another leaf spot disease is known as septoria as shown on the figure. It, uh, it has a, a blood sheet block um, discoloration on the leaves and on the fruits. Another disease uh, caused by um, fungus is the early blight in tomato as well as in potato. So this is uh, caused by the uh, early, this is called as the early blight. So another disease uh, known as late blight also in tomato and potato. So late blight of tomato, as you can see on the figure is marked by a, a, rotting, a rotting of the of the tomato fru fruit and also on the potato. So downy mildew is uh, attacking beans, cantaloupes, and cucumbers. As you can see on the under uh, photo of um, cucumber, our yellowish discoloration caused by um, downy mildew. So this is also another disease powder called powdery mildew, and this is this attacks squash, pumpkins, watermelon, cantaloupes, and cucumber. So another important disease is also fusarium wilt caused by fusarium sp in tomato, watermelon, and cantaloupes. So they are generally uh, wilting. So yes. Yeast spot is also found in corn and beans, as you can see, um, the block uh, discoloration and infestation on the leaves and on the fruit, on the beans, as well as on the stem. <clears throat> Another um, important disease in beans is the bean rust, as marked by reddish or rusty discoloration on its leaf. And scab in cucumber, melon, pumpkin, and squash. As you can see, there is a, a yellowing of spot spotting on the leaves. Dumping off of uh, many vegetables is also a disease, no? And bacterial wilt cause viral stone and solanasharum in potato and many others. So these are the uh, wilting of the leaves and also. Uh, rotting and of the fruits. So another bacteria will caused by Ir Irwinia carotovora is also found in cucurbits. As you can see, all the f the leaves are wilting. And this is a a potato scab in potato. And the crown rat of banana, and which is caused by a multiple. Um, types of organisms, fungal, and bacterial diseases. So a, a, a bacterial disease uh, known as moco or bacterial wheat of banana is uh, 
is exhibited on the following symptoms, yellowing of the leaves and wilting. And bugtok, or commonly observed in Saba or Cardaba, the plants appear healthy, but the fruits are discolored and lumpy. And this, uh, of course, um, de deters the quality of the fruit. So nematode diseases is another pro uh, another uh, problem in many vegetables such as cucumber, tomato, carrot, and cantaloupes. Uh, as you can see here, this is caused by root knot nematode. And lastly, which are viral diseases, which causes yellowing, mosaic patterns, streaking, stunting, spotting, and mottling. So we have first the cucumber mosaic and the bunchy top of banana wherein new leaves are stunted and bunchy and the leaf edges they are deformed and yellow. We also have the papaya ring spot virus. As you can see, uh, the green discoloration in rings in fruits. And uh, there are also cultural diseases, no? Uh, which is caused by cultural practice like the blossom and rot no, in tomato, pepper, watermelon, and squash. So it's caused by too much water or water lagging. So that this is the blossom and rot. And another herbicide injury. injury. Um, this is the cause of uh, the application of herbicides which only which does not only kill the weeds but also the wraps so definitely they also wilt and eventually die so the general control measure for the the pest and management and disease program are the following first you should always plant the best quality seed and select the crops that best suited to your soil and climate. And you should always control the weeds since weeds can harbor a lot of pests and also diseases. And control the insect pests as they can be viral disease carrier or vectors such as the aphids, the green leaf hopper, and others. And you also select plots of lawns that are fertile and well drained and use only the best quality fertilizers. So another general control measures, you should buy plant the same seed, disease-free and certified to make sure first and foremost. And you use disease-resistant cultivars if it is available. When harvest is completed, destroy the remains of the annual crops as soon as practical. And follow recommended planting dates for your area. You should also advise to take crops, no? Or... To have a companion crop you know, while planting your main crop. And physical control may involve like um, cutting of weeds and others or picking of um, maggots and other. So another general control measure is also include, uh, which is also good for the pest management and disease management is also mulching. And we also have diversified planting wherein you plant a lot of crops in different fields and bear in the same fields and different crops. And you can also put up barriers and trap plants like for um, plants that uh, in, instead of, of the main crop, you plant under underside so they can be the trap plants. And also beneficial insects such as bees is very a very good for pollination for example and you can also use biological control such as the bacillus thuringiensis earwigs or tetrasticos and others and first and foremost for the control of um um these uh, viral viral diseases you should always eradicate them and quarantine the area if it's infested already so or the last resort is chemical control using insecticides, fungicides, nematicides, and bactericides. So these are synthetic chemicals. You can also make use biocontrol agents or um, organic 
or natural uh, chemical. No? So what are these pesticides? We have first the insecticides um, for the one which, contain, which contains Bt or Bacillus thuringiensis is called uh, dipel. And um, chemical component of cypermethrin can be mag branded as magnum, delta methrin, disease, carboforan, furadan, and malathion, malathion, methamyl, or lanate. So those are some of the common insecticides available in the market. We also have fungicides such as benomil or benlate in, in the in um, commercial name, Bravo, Dairene, Maneb, Mancozeb, Ceridate, and many other fungicides. We also have bactericides, streptomycin or antibiotics, or serenade, or copper-based copper fungicides can also be can also control bacteria. So, and uh, nematicides such as fumigans, fumigans and other copper-based Fungicides. So fungicides and insecticides and other pesticides can be um, um, contact or um, um, contact herbicide, meaning they uh, you just uh, or systemic contact herbicide. It means that you only kill the the pest or the disease causing agents uh, when they are being sprayed by this chemical pesticides or um, um, chemicals but um, with the systemic pesticides uh, when you have sprayed this on plants uh, they are incorporated into the plant system and whenever the this insects or diseases or or fungicides or bacteria eat the plants, then they are, um, they die or they are being um, controlled. So they can be, yes, I have mentioned, they can be synthetic chemicals uh, in organic, such as cryolite or sulfur, or organic such as pyrethrum or rotinone. And synthetic chemicals can be chlorinated hydrocarbons, organic phosphates, carbamates, or pyrethroids. And they can be, as, as, as I have said, contact systemic or ingestible. So again, contact herb, uh, pesticides when directly is uh, sprayed onto the insects or, or fungicide, fungus or or uh, virus or bacteria and it's systemic it is sprayed to the plant but um, once the the pest and this is attacked then it is controlled and for uh, and also photosynthesis or enzymes inhibitory and safety precautions uh, precautions should always be answered so you always read the label for the safety precautions so this is an example of a hornworm parasite as a biological control agent. As you can see, the 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 hornworm is uh, being attacked by this parasite. Intercropping, such as with chili, can be intercropped with okra, eggplant, radish to control pests and also diseases. Cab cabbage with onion and tomato, tomato with carrot, cucumber, onion, and garlic or um, cucumber with radish, corn, lettuce, and peanut with corn and okra, or radish with cucumber, tomato, chili. So these are the examples of intercropping uh, combination in order to control pests and diseases. You can also use rotation systems such as you plant the leafy vegetables, then root, ve root crops, then legume crops, and then fruit crops. Or you start with the root grass, then leafy vegetables, fruit crops, and legumes. Or you start with legume fruits and root and leaf crops. Or you start with fruits, legume, leaf, and root crops. So corn is also a good comp component of the rotation system for the control of nematodes. So you, if, there are, if you want to control nematodes, so you can use corn along the rotation. There are also pest repellent crops, such as for ants, the mint, 
is good as is good repellent for aphids, garlic chives, cilantro, coriander, and one soy. And anise are good for repellent for aphids. Tomato, radish, and marigold are good repellent for beetle. Onion and garlic is good for borers. And mint and celery are repellents for cabbage moths. And onion, garlic, chives for mites. Marigold, dahlia, calendula, asparagus for nematode. And marigold for white fly. So these are the following pest rep repellents for specific pests. We also have sacrificial plants. So we example, uh, we have dill and tomato for hornworm. Um, and soybean and cruciferous carrot eggplant for beetles. And as sacrificial plants for beetles because they eat a lot of this, this. And you can also sacrifice zinnia marigold for beetles and also okra for leaf hoppers in eggplant and chewy some for crucifers. So these are examples of highly recommended resistant varieties under the Department of Agriculture Bureau of Agricultural Research Project. So for eggplant, we have the A300, the Mara, Conception, and Arayat. For bitter gourd, we have SR3. For tomato, Pinocchio, Tinagbak, and BRCI. And for yard long bean, we have Sandigan, CSL19, ACC228. And for pepper, we have Bright Star and Inokra. For baggy beans, we have T1, B21, Hub63. For garden pea, we have CGP14. And for cabbage, we have Alex and TK Cross. So some other recent resistant varieties for broccoli is pinnacle, cauliflower is silver cup 40, and betsai is green stem and lettuce resident. So other physical methods of um, controlling pests, we have insect scouting. So you shall uh, you you look for and look look and and collect insects, then collect them. And then uh, you uh, you just um, manually press them to death. So we that is actually what they call as tiricide, tiris, no? Or you you um, wrap them like this one in in bitter gourd. You wrap them or on this this one. So that's the what they call balothion or smoke bomb, like um, you smoke them around to control flies, example. And we have the sabog, like asukal, sapal, and yamas as control agents. Or inside the kulambo, or you cover them with, um, with um, net, no? So that's a, a cultural practice, physical method. So, you can also use mulch during wet and dry season for weed control and also soil protection for the fruits to reduce pests and diseases and also save watering and labor, label, labor and will help for better quality of and crops and yields. So if you want to attract the natural enemies, so these are example of plant attractants. We have basil. Amaranth, sunflower, cosmos, and zinnia. This will allow weeds also. You can also allow weeds in some area as plant attractant. So if you are not into synthetic chemicals, you can also use botanical pesticide to, to prevent um, uh, contamination or, or to be conservative with use of heavy use of synthetic pesticides. So you can spray silicidine or hot pepper extra used for aphids and larva with about 100 gram hot pepper extra juice. And this is good for one sprayer and you can add soap, no? So you also can spray perlathione or the, so the, the natural soap solution for, for we call them perla. And this is good for mice, white fly, me and mealybugs. And you can also spray nucleo polyhedrosis virus or NPV for lipidopterous pests. You can collect and uh, dead and sickly bugs or grind and 
with 10 to 15 larva good for once per year um you can you can um use them um you can also spray bt or in, in um they are available in centauri and halt for dbm um or diamond back mall so this bring money bring wife and bring uh, mother-in-law is just a, a joke no if you can bring them for help no and you can also spray bu buvaria bashana fungus effective against dbm or the diamond back moth also ants aphids melibug psyllids cat worms white flies corn burr and other soft body insects so the high probable enters insect body with buvirucin buber toxin uh, it will die and these are actually marketed as rambo in the soil or you can also spray metarisium, no fungus effective against leaf hoppers, beetles, and other hard bodied insects, and available commercially in the Philippines. So, some other botanical pesticides you can spray onion extract or fermented plant juice or compost tea for mildews, and use other natural curing organisms such as Lactobacillus, like the one that we are drinking in. Um, in Yakult or other probio prebiotics, use other botanical pesticides such as just the neem tree or or berries, no. As a as a as a directa. So these are just example of species, and and their pesticidal feature that you can use and the chemical compounds that are found here so like for example this uh euphorbia goyune and so on euphorbia herta and so on these are actually antibacteria because uh, they contain diterpenes ceramides tannins alkaloids flavonoids and so on and if you need uh, an antiviral uh, also under the family of you euphorbia cansoi hiberna and so on they have uh, the same chemical compounds like diterpenes diterpenes alkaloids they are also good antiviral and antifungal as well you know? like the um the corcus the euphorbia herta and so on uh, also nematicidal under the family euphorbia also and so on they contain the same chemicals diterpenes flavonoids phenols and peptides also if you need molecidal effect so you can also uh, have this species of euphorbia with the same chemical formula and also as an insecticidal as they as most of it has Ricinin, diterpenoids, and essential oils, and also flavonoids, steroids. So, which you have the Euphorbia herta, uh, J. Kirkas, Ricinus communis, and so on. And also anti list manual no? for uh, this following species in the same components. So, you can also read use reduced risk insecticides using my, uh, microbials products like the bacillus thuringiensis known as penosins and insect growth regulators such as methoprene and pibuflenol zide and botanicals such as neem and essential oils and uh, newer chemistries like the neonicotinoids and fipronil and indoxacarp so these are botanical insecticides which are used in California also. We have the, the D-limonene for pests and pyrethrins, rotinone, azadiractin is the name, and sabadilia. So these are the uh, plant essentials, monoterpenes and phenols, which are very important um, natural controls of uh, botanical pesticides so some plant in essential oils and their major constituents 
Like for rosemary, they contain uh, one eighth cinnamon for cloves. They have eugenol, cinnamon, they have cinnamaldehyde. Lemongrass, they have citronellal and citral. For mint, they have menthol. And thyme, they have thymol. So these are the major constituents as essential oils. As insecticides or miticides, um, they can be um, uh, contain monoterpenoids, concentrates, and they are octopamine antagonists or membrane disruptors. And their pesticide, the action is through contact, knockdown, or as fumigant, deterrent, or repellent. So this is good for sucking insects or mice and some small lepidopterans or dipterans. It can also be applied for rot you know, with the following formulation. We also have the EcoSmart Technology Consumer Products, which has containing, this is just an example. This is not really promoting the product, but um, they contain rosemary oil, wintergreen oil, peppermint oil, and cinnamon oil. And we have uh, some other eco-smart technologies. We have agricultural products, uh, prof professional products. We have got active ingredients of our natural oils from different plants, such as clove leaf oil, rosemary, thyme, peppermint, and cinnamon. Or eugenol, rosemary oil, and two fenny ethyl propionate and thyme oil so these are just example of available available um commercially eco smart technologies so if you have questions just um comment on this posted video and um i'm going to see you uh, on the next meeting and uh you can also chat me on our chat group so thank you for watching this video and happy new year 2021 and I'm going I'm going to see you again on next meeting